All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode number 71 of my weekly, or mostly weekly, Jump Game Review Series. I am your host, Chris Gogolin. Uh, welcome back. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we've done a show, so thank you guys for tuning in and catching up with us uh, between the Outrider Cup playoff matchups and then a uh, short break while I was on vacation and stuff. I think it's been almost about a month since uh, the last weekly show that I've done. So let's get caught up on what's been going on. So uh, you'll notice there's a lot more people in the gem lobby. We'll get to that in a minute, of course. Uh, we had the Endor Grand Prix. That was a huge success. Well, first, let's wrap up the Outrider Cup. Uh, Team USA won! Huzzah! Uh, but thanks to all 12 participants uh, for agreeing to it um, and for coordinating their matchups. And uh, hopefully everybody had a great uh, amount of fun with the format. Um, I know I did in terms of, uh, you know, just organizing it and getting the deck lists and stuff and getting those posted. And uh, I think the Highlander format really made it a lot more exciting. So we didn't just have the, the top two decks times six, you know, throne room and something and uh, Rops and Map. And then they just, you know, throne room and Diplo probably. And then Rops and Map uh, all just battling it out. I think uh, certainly added some, some deck diversity. We got to see uh, a lot more creativity from the players in this particular uh, format and uh, kind of got to give everybody a little bit of a starting point for a variety of decks for where things can go with the post uh, set 12 uh, erratas and the first couple of tweaks. So I thought that was a good way to start off the year for the community. So thanks to everybody again involved with that and for participating in that. And uh, we'll have to figure out exactly what the prize was. I know we had talked about store credit, but then some of the players on the teams were saying that that was just you know too easy, that they wanted something different. There was some talk of like some sweatshirts or t-shirts or something. Um, so I'll have to get with those players and figure out exactly what it is that they want. And uh, we'll get their prizes uh, taken care of and, and distributed to them. Um, you can still find the results uh, of the Outrider Cup here. You just go to the 2019 Outrider Cup. This will probably get archived in a couple of weeks. Um, but uh, the matchups and results are all here. And most of the games have been moved to YouTube. And you can find those replays there. So you've got round one. This is pre errata and then you've got round two, which is post errata, and you've got a lot of uh, uh, games for that to view as well. So a lot of good stuff there. Of course, thanks to Queso and uh, Dan for the games that they streamed uh, during the Outrider Cup. I uh, always appreciate uh, you know the team effort that we're able to put in to give the, the community some good streaming content. And speaking of Queso doing streaming, that segues us into the Endor Grand Prix. Uh, which happened just a few weeks ago, and Queso was that. Of course, I want to make sure we point out the Constellation event uh, winners, Charlie, who won that, and uh, Ryan finishing in second. So uh, they'll be picking up some Player of the Year points, as may, uh, with 22 players, the top four may get points. So Justin and Worfs may pick up a, a point or something uh, from that. I still have to do the Player of the Year standings, which now actually have a little bit more weight, since they do tie into the Outrider Cup selections, so we'll be uh, sure to get those details up. But the main event, uh, well, you know, before we get to the main event, let me see if we can get the updates here on the team event. Because the team event was won by... Oh, we don't have the photo there. Oh, so bad. I apologize. I thought the photo was there. Maybe it's here in team tournament updates. Yes, yes, there it is. Hey, it's sideways. I can't rotate it. But the team tournament was won by Ryan Jellison and his wife, Elspeth. Uh, congratulations to both of them. And uh, they picked up the, as you can see, the very cool uh, coffee mugs. Uh, Endor Grand Prix, Seattle, Starbucks coffee mug. Sure. So congrats to them. And uh, we have our first uh, women holding down, uh, holding a trophy. Uh, in the Star Wars CCG in quite some time, so it's good to uh, see that uh, small little bit of diversity. Every drop in the bucket uh, certainly helps, and hopefully that may encourage a few other 
players' wives who've been sitting on the fence about, you know, learning to play the game or, you know, not wanting to come out to tournaments and fear that they're going to be distracting to the other players or they're not really going to know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that'll encourage a few more uh, uh, spouses to pick up the game and uh, to come to participate in events. And uh, maybe we'll see a, a spouse challenge sometime. Some type of team spouse challenge where it's, uh, you know, couples playing against each other uh, for the the right to uh, to hold the champ. Every every team will be a couple. Uh, I think that would certainly be interesting. So uh, maybe we'll get there someday. Um, I know we could certainly use uh, players any way we can get them. So that's always a, a big plus to see that. And you can see the Endor Grand Prix banner that they're standing in front of. Uh, which uh, Dan Tartaglione had made up from uh, the company he works for uh, to give them some nice uh, backdrop throughout the weekend. So thanks to Dan for taking care of that. And then, of course, the other big thing that happened was the overall winner, Hayes Hunter, who's always been a, a bro to the show, if you will. Uh, actually, Hayes doesn't watch the show because Hayes doesn't have a Twitch account. Um... I was going to make him a Twitch account. I never got around to doing that. He wouldn't watch it anyway. But uh, <laughs> congratulations to Hayes. Also, congratulations to uh, Brian Fred making it to the finals. And uh, top four was also uh, Eric Hunter. So we had, uh, you know, the brothers of uh, Towers of Terror over there, um, Hayes and Eric. And it's great to see uh, them both playing the game competitively again and uh, you know, making, it, making a good run into the finals or into the final four. Ah, uh, Hayes. I remember him when he was only like six feet tall. Um, <laughs> so, uh, great to have that. And, of course, congratulations to Stubbly, uh, who this was his first major tournament, so he showed up and uh, made the top four. Um, primarily been known as a gem player, playing in the gem PC, the OCS, all these months. So, uh, uh, we've done a few of his game reviews, I believe, over the, the years. So congrats to Stubbly on that Final Four appearance as well. And uh, everybody had a good time. They had like 40 players there, which was the biggest Endor Grand Prix ever. Uh, I think this is the fifth year or sixth year that they've had the tournament there. And uh, it was the largest field they've ever had. So uh, that's awesome and uh, certainly something to build on and look forward to for next year. So... Hopefully we will get to see more of that. Um, totally lost my train of thought. I was reading the comments in chat. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, top placing viewer. This guy. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, that's a, that's a top eight. Uh, yeah, you know. Top placing viewer certainly uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be stubbly for for this tournament, but uh, you know there's just there's another tournament right around the corner with the MPC there, so uh, you could be the top placing viewer uh, for that tournament. But yeah, MPC coming up registration deadline. Well, we're already past. The discount deadline, that was January 31st. Uh, we're currently sitting at 26 players out of the 64 available slots. Uh, other things I do want to, of course, course point out. Uh, the Where's the hotel room booking link? I had it. It was there. All right. I will have to find that and move that because I know it was there. We had our room block... Maybe it's in a different thread. Eh, hotel booking link. It's in a different thread. I gave it its own thread. Um, group cutoff rate is March 17th. So you've got about a month. I think it's five weeks from now. Uh, after that, all the rooms we have blocked off, if they have not already been reserved, are released to the general public. So then you will have to be competing with them for room reservations. You will also not get the discount. Um, and if the hotel is full, there is another alternative up the street where I stayed at last year. Uh, it's only like a two or three block walk. Basically, it's on the other side of all the food. So instead of walking two blocks north of the hotel 
to get food, you would leave your hotel, walk two blocks south, passing all the food options uh, on your way to the venue, the hotel where the event is at. So uh, you're going to leave the hotel to go get food anyway. So if you pick it up on your way, it's not really like a big of an, a big of an inconvenience. It's only really a problem at like midnight when you're done playing board games or at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and you're like, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. And you're like, now I have to walk two or three blocks. Um, so obviously try and use this booking link, get your room reserved as soon as you can, and then get yourself pre-registered through the PC store. And the links for that are also available right here in the pre-registration link. Uh, like I said, we're up to about 26 players. Uh, we've got Kim back who will be running uh, the tournament. Tim Simon will be on hand to do rules. We'll still figure out who we want to do uh, commentary, but uh, certainly some... Uh, some familiar names on this list and a handful of names who uh, we haven't seen at many major events. Uh, so nice to see a good diversity so far, and I assume we'll get uh, another 30-plus players uh, for this event. We haven't filled the bracket in a couple of years. We haven't had all 64. Um, we've gotten close, but uh, haven't had all 64. So hopefully we'll do that again this year and get back to a full bracket, and then everybody has a first-round opponent, and we don't have to worry about any buys or anything like that. So that's coming up here in mid-April. That's your next live major event in the U.S. Um, I don't think there's any regionals uh, between now and then in the U.K. or Europe or anything. But uh, the other big major event going on right now is the OCS, which is back with a vengeance. The 2020 OCS has relaunched seven months, just like last year. Foils, just like last year. Play eight games, get one copy of a foil. Play 12 games in the month, get a second copy of the same foil. Um, so certainly a uh, good goal to encourage yourself. And just like last year, there are not one, but two at-large bids, at least, guaranteed, up for grabs. So playing all your games each month uh, certainly has an extra incentive. Um, even just picking up a few points, you know, if you get to nine or ten games, you're like, oh, I can't. There's no way I'm going to be able to play the rest of my games. Try anyway. Even if you lose them, lose them quickly, um, and get them both in and just take those two points, that might make the difference. You'd be surprised how often uh, one or two points will separate players, um, change seedings and overall standings, uh, or be just enough to move someone, give someone a bump uh, in the point total, and separate them and break a tie. So... Uh, try and get all your games in. We've got uh, about 65 or so. I haven't updated this count at the top. Uh, I think I added one or two more people just the, uh, the other day. So we're in the upper 60s in terms of people who have season passes, which is $50 for all seven months. So you get a nice little discount there because normally it costs you $10 per month, which is the other option. So if you don't want to spend all $50 at once and you just want to play month to month uh, as your time permits, you can certainly do that. And it only costs you $10 per month. In the past, I have done a cutoff of like the first week or two. Um, not doing that this year. So if you want to sign up on the 24th for that month and pay your $10, we will happily take your $10. Um, just know that you may find it hard to get all your games in, and that's the risk that you assume by paying so late in the month. Uh, the season pass you can purchase at any time, and that will allow you to play throughout future months. Um, it may take me a day or two also to get you added, so the longer you wait, the more days you are missing out on the availability of, uh, or the potential to play games. So as of right now, I'm not going to do a cutoff. If it gets to be too much of a pain in the rear end, uh, we will look at uh, subject to change. But as of right now, I'm going to try not doing a cutoff this year just to try and encourage as many people as possible, give everybody a lot more opportunities to continue to get the foils that we gave out last year. We gave out about 100 foils a month last year. Um, so we'd uh, like to do the same or greater this year if we can, and hopefully we'll encourage everyone to continue playing throughout the month to hit those 8 and 12 game thresholds. Um, the other thing is uh, we should be getting, I should be getting some foil. I'll get, uh, Kevin's going to be sending me the, uh, like, one copy of a number of the foils for the first couple months, so in future episodes of the show, I will be able to show off what the foil you're playing for for the month will be. Uh, also, to make my life easier, uh, foils will be batched. So I had kind of been doing it this way, but now I have a very definitive schedule, which I will be posting. 
uh, since you guys are watching, I'll tell you what it's going to be. February and March will be mailed at the end of April. If you attend the MPC, I will hand them to you there, and you will get them a little earlier than everybody else, um, and you will get to possibly use them during the MPC. Um, May, June, and July will get mailed out together sometime in mid to late August. If there is a U.S. Nationals tournament, like there was last year, which should be in mid-August, uh, they will be handed out there to the players, and the people who are in attendance at the event will get them a few days earlier. Everybody else will get them in the mail later. Uh, the online weekend, the hollow foils, like the last couple of years have been like, uh, you know, Commander... Uh, I think it was, what, Rex and Captain Phasma, and uh, we did Grievous and Isla a couple years ago. I think last year was Snoke and uh, Kit Fisto. Um, those online foils which come out, uh, the tournament takes place the end of May. Um, those foils will be included in Batch 2. Um, and then Batch 3, which is the foils for um, August and September the final two months of the OCS, plus potentially perfect attendance. I would like to hand those out at Worlds, if that's available. Uh, rumor has it Worlds will be in early October. Shh, not confirmed yet. But, spoiler alert, uh, rumor has it that's when the World Championships will be this year. Everything's still being finalized, so that's, of course, subject to change um, with the hotels and venues and, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, rumor has it it will be in October again. And then uh, I'd like to hand everything out then. If not, well, it'll get mailed out at, uh, you know, everyone can Halloween, trick or treat. Hey, you got some Star Wars foils. So that's how that process should all work for 2020. And then uh, depending on when they get mailed out, how that may tie in with a uh, local tournament weekend, which is usually the first week of November, some of that stuff might get mailed then because we like to send those out. Hopefully in advance, people can hand them out at the at the local tournaments. So that might tie in with that. So we'll, real life events and uh, some foils can be distributed that way, and uh, that's how that'll all work. But still plenty of time to sign up for the OCS. Uh, still plenty of games left to play. Um, but let's take a look at the standings because we haven't done that yet. Right here, a handy dandy league in Jimp OCS qualifier February. Bam! Look at all these people who have already played games. Look at the people who have already finished all 12 of their games. Uh, got a handful of guys here. Currently sitting in the lead right now with an 11-1. and one. Jared Napolitano. Congrats, Jared. Jared, during the Endor Grand Prix uh, live stream, uh, I raffled off a OCS free pass. Uh, season pass for free. And Jared won that raffle and is putting it to good use, going 11-1 and one in month number one. So, congrats on that performance. Some other good performances. Gavin, 10-2. and two. Gavin was in the playoffs last year, made it to the top eight. Uh, as did uh, Brenson was in the playoffs. He lost in the first round, I believe, the same round I lost in, so no, no shame there. But did make the top 16 cut. And then a few other players who uh, have also uh, finished some of their 12 games. Uh, Stubbly not able to capitalize on his momentum from the Endor Grand Prix. This looks to be, what, 6 and 5 and 5? Five? Five, uh, 4 and 8, yeah. And then looking at other players. Tom Damon, that looks like a 6-0. Could still make a big run here. It's a 5-0 for Silver Glen. There's a shocker. 13% uh, opponent win percentage. Well, when you're 5-0, you're probably not playing people who have won a lot of games. A couple of 4-0s here for some... Uh, I forget who Marty McFly is. Uh, I believe that's Martin DeBuff, who's a European player. Two Euros, I believe. Uh, we got Paul, of course, and then uh, Martin at 4-0. Uh, Golden God is at 3-0. Congrats, Charlie, on that start. And then a couple of 2-0s down here as well, still with uh, plenty of time in the month. Uh, it is a leap year, so you do have an extra day, and I believe I did account for that. Yes, I did. Look at that. Uh, February 29th. Whew. <laughs> that had been awkward. Queso sauce. Undefeated 1-0. So is Tartag. Uh-oh. 
And you guys have a little friendly bet going, I think, between uh, which one of you is going to finish higher in the OCS. I don't know what the stakes are in your little friendly side bet, but... Uh, Where's the... Oh, Taco. Played one game, lost one game. His opponent has a 91.67% win percentage. So I'm guessing you played Jared? That was your one loss? Was to him? That would make the most sense mathematically, because he was 11-1, and one, so that would be about, what, like 8 points a game? Which would be about that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see uh, what the, the the friendly bet is between the Hollow Theater co-hosts. Maybe we can think of some stakes. Maybe uh, maybe our viewers can vote on the stakes for what uh, they want to see happen. You know, we'll make... Uh, uh, Jerry has to wear, like, a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey to a tournament or something like that. And if... Uh, and if... If Dan wins. And if, if Jerry wins, then Dan has to wear, like, a Broncos jersey or something. So, um, but yes, yeah, so the OCS is going on right now. I'm sure there's probably some people waiting. Nope, nobody waiting to play, but I'm sure there's, well, this game's frozen. This game's bugged, Kimura and Munchanka. This game's been there for about two days now. Uh, I talked to the Jump development team. The only way they can fix that is basically to do a server restart, which they will have to do at some point this week. So that'll get fixed then. It doesn't seem to be stopping players from playing other games. Um, so that should be okay. Uh, if either of the players watch the show, if they go into the game, if you go into the game, and then there should be a way to request the game cancel from the options tab. Yeah, it's not even loading up. Um, but if you go into the options tab, there's like a button that says request game cancel. If both players hit that, it sh could potentially cancel the game, and then that would also solve the problem. I don't know if you guys have both tried that, but that would be what you need to do there. Chris Kelly, thank you for renewing your Twitch Prime subscription for month number 15. Woohoo! Let's see what we got here. Make Dan wear, Dan wear an Ovechkin jersey only if you wear a Malkin. Uh, Dan, you can make him wear a Sidney Crosby jersey, right? Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't that be like the biggest insult? Doesn't everybody hate Crosby? So, uh huh, and for the okay, ASM shuffle bug. Oh, I thought that was taken care of, but oh, whoops. Uh, I don't know. They fix uh, the follow bug. Is that what you're talking about? Where the the uh, the the chancellor doesn't the prisoner doesn't follow. I feel like they fixed that already. So, um, but plenty of active games going on here. But before we do that, uh, we are going to jump into our game review of the week, which just so happens to be submitted by our Mr. First Place, Jared Napolitano. In one of his OCS games from this month, he took on Mike Kessling, and it was Court of the Vile Gangster against Prophet, which is always an interesting matchup because... Court, uh, sorry, Prophet converts Court's audience chamber, which kind of throws a monkey wrench now that Court also gets to start two aliens. So there's a bit of a trade off there. Um, you don't get to pull the alien, any alien of your choice when, when you want to, but you get to start two aliens of your choice right now. Um, you do also lose a force icon, but they also gain the uh, alien leaders are all immune to attrition there, which Court usually has five or six of, so that's a plus for them. The downside for them is if you control, scum is automatically canceled. Whereas on the dark side text, light side uh, has to spend four force to cancel scum and villainy. In this particular version, they do not. Occasionally, and I believe we saw this in one of the matchups at the Endor Grand Prix, um, Court will run Chal Bacan and use him as one of your starting aliens. Because when he's deployed, he lets you take a non-unique alien into hand. And if you take the Cloud City Engineer, if you're also running that card in your deck, um, you can deploy him, and then he allows you to raise your converted location to the top. 
So you start Chow, and somebody else will say, I don't know, Jabba, Pondababa, whoever. Uh, Pondababa is not bad because he stops Master Luke, uh, but even if you started, you know, Jabba or somebody like that, um, Jabba pulls scum. You've already got aliens on the table. Chow makes aliens deploy minus one. Scum makes aliens deploy minus one. So now you've got a minus two, and you get the Cloud City Engineer. Put him down for free. Pull your location to the top. So now uh, you can now use your your audience chamber text, and now you can pull another alien, and suddenly you can start snowballing five or six aliens into the audience chamber all on turn one. Oh, shuffling the force pile after taking a card. That fix. Um, yeah, that I don't know if that was fixed with the stunning move. Um, I thought I heard that that had been fixed, but that may not have been completed yet. I guess we will have to see if that's been the case. Somebody can test the stunning move later and uh, let us all know. If not, I'll just bump it on the list. Okay. So, in this particular instance, Kessling opted to start Pwned Baba V, who we mentioned. Game text of non-Jedi Luke, or lightsaber he is using, may not target aliens here. So, it screws Master Luke, who basically bounces one of these aliens back to your hand, and then they usually beat the crap out of the other one. Ponda kind of stops that uh, until Ponda gets hit, and then sorry about the mess or something, and then they beat the crap out of whoever else is left. Um, yeah. And then Darrow says when deployed, may deploy a droid here or a restraining bolt. Well, when he's deployed, he's deployed for free, and at the beginning of the game, you can't get charged for anything. So by deploying Darrow, you get to download a droid here essentially for free. So he grabbed Guri. Uh, good power, good forfeit, immune to attrition, immune to restraining bolt. Opponent may not draw more than one battle destiny here. So you've got quite a few things going for you with Guri, and getting her out for free early in the game, certainly uh, a great benefit. So the Darrow-Gurry combo, pretty strong as well. Tonight's beverage is brought to us by Chick-fil-A, <clears throat> which is fitting because uh, Mike, Mike, Mike Kessling works for Chick-fil-A. So uh, <clears throat> not playing any favorites in this matchup, I swear. Although Mike uh, may have given me a free Chick-fil-A entree card, and I don't think Jared's given me any uh, free meal coupons yet. All right, so we got the new rendezvous point on Tatooine starting interrupt as well. If you have deployed a Jabba's Palace site, deploy seeking an audience and up to two effects that deploy on table and are always immune to alter, then you put this in your hand, which means you then can use the Lost version to download a Tatooine Battleground go many, many ways with that Tatooine Battleground. You can get the Lars Moisture Farm. You can get the city outskirts. So you can pull a Jedi and start walking him over. Um, you can get the, I've seen people do, get the Cantina, so you've got extra interior sites for, you know, things like that. If you want to do Moss Eisley in the Cantina Shuffle, you'll be f fishing for one of them. Uh, I've seen people pull the system with that as well, so then you can try and occupy the Tatooine system and set up Celebration or something. It's very card-intensive to do it that way, but certainly an option. Flip your objective, uh, kind of offset the early game damage, and then get Celebration set up to kind of win out in a drain race. There's usually not a lot of room for a lot of space in a profit deck, so probably not the easiest route to go. Absolutely. All right. And Kessling's going to go with the traditional Battle Order First Strike, Jabba's Haven, and wipe them out. All of them. Jared's going with I Must Be Allowed to Speak and Saitor. Oh, and he's got some shiny foil versions, which must make Chris Kelly very happy. Okay. So he does have the farm. He's going to Wisa, get the Boss Nash Chamber. Leia Rebel Princess is pretty strong against aliens, but also having a droid there does also negate her. So this is also a pretty good start for Kessling as well. Uh, Leia's Blaster Rifle, very likely to see play in this particular uh, matchup. Seeing more and more play now with the, the change to Saitor. Uh, let me just double check, see which Han this is. This is this particular Han. I've seen people use it in Solo. 
just because of when you do free him, then you get the interrupt from your lost pile. Um, and most people kind of just assume that you're going to play this Han, and they don't pull secret plans. Double check which Han your opponent is playing. That's very important. Even if you see Han, make sure he's got the virtual text on him, because uh, we saw that trick once. Uh, yeah, and then everybody heard about it, but it worked once. Um, and opponent got to retrieve 10 force for free because his opponent just assumed, hey, that's the Han that makes him immune to secret plans, so I'm not pulling it. And it was like, ta-da, it's not the virtual Han, it's just the 2-2 two -two crappy two-player game, or Jedi pack Han. And he retrieved 10 cards and didn't have to pay for any of it. All right. So Kessling's going to activate 5. Um... This is where he's going to, you know, he'll get something with his objective. He'll probably get now Huda if it's available there. But he's going to have to basically rely on his opening hand cards. Oh, he had now Huda in hand. Um, in terms of defensive cards, in terms oh, he had Jabba in hand, so that's lucky. Um, because by not starting Jabba, you kind of limit yourself to having to fish for scum. Now you do have three, four, five copies of Twi'lek Advisor, um, which can download alien leaders, so you have ways to get scum and get Jabba. So not starting him is probably, a, a, especially in this particular, the Darrow thing with Guri is pretty strong. Uh, no doubt about that. So uh, we do see Jared go get the Court Killer, which is a gift. We've talked about this before. Uh, in some of the Outrider Cup games. Uh, you move a droid to the audience chamber, deploy it on the droid. Uh, he becomes an undercover spy, so he blocks the drain. And then anywhere in the entire universe that they have an alien, their battle destiny draws are minus two, and their force drains are minus one. It is absolutely brutal to a scum deck to have to deal with this card. It's almost unwinnable. Almost. We'll say like 90% unwinnable. Because, of course, you can still... You can still find ways to win games. Um, you know, you have 30 power to your opponent's four. It doesn't really matter what you draw for Battle Destiny in that matchup. So. Um, but yeah, otherwise, a gift in a, in a competitive game, a gift is going to be a killer. So uh, you'll have to see ways that uh, Darkseid has to combat that. Uh, Uta Guta solo, Probot. That kind of stuff. And you might see people have to go back to playing. Uh, oh God, what's the the card that kills droids? Looks or droids. You just pay force and just destroy them. I think that works still. All right, so we got Jabba, we got Scum. He'll activate one with wipe. And now we'll see. Jared get some more of his activation out. He had the farm in hand. He's going to get the boss Nash chamber out. Um, and then he will look for something with... He's going to look for... He's going to use rendezvous point and just hope whatever battleground he has left is there. It is there in this particular matchup. He's also going to get a peek to verify. And I'm going to pause it so you can basically copy his whole deck if you want. Um, hey... Decrepital, thank you for renewing your subscription for month number two. Um, so yeah, so 3PO is in there, so I'm, I'm expecting him to pull 3PO uh, once he gets this site out. He gets the anti-chamber, so he's playing another interior Jabba's Palace site. Interior sites are usually pretty good um, for several reasons. Uh, it keeps you away from chicken walkers and AT-ATs and things like that. Um, Blizzard 4 is less of a threat, of course, because they can't just, you know, drop here and get another guy on top of it. Not in the scum matchup, but in other matchups. Um, and if you happen to be playing um, you've got a lot of guts coming here. Well, now you've got extra sites that will trigger the benefit of your uh, effect. You don't usually see guts in a Profit deck simply because the retrieval aspect is what it's most played for, and uh, against court, you're just probably going to deal with that in other ways by securing the audience chamber. But the uh, thing to keep in mind, of course, the other side of it is that it makes your rebels of ability equal three.
power and forfeit plus two at Java's Palace sites. So you'd have two sites where you'd be getting that benefit. Um, we see that more in the beatdown versions that run the Jedi Presence and things. Uh, you'll drop Ben Kenobi or Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then Luke plus Lando, Scoundrel, plus possibly Leia, uh, Organa, Owen and Baru, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a number of Ability 3 uh, Rebels that you can use. Uh, Saw Guerrero, that kind of stuff. And then suddenly they're all power 6, power 8, and then you double it with Jedi Presence, and you're like, I've got 104 power to your 17. And it's like, man, I wish I had Ephant Mon to suck up all that extra battle damage. So... All right, so Jared wisely uses a force to move his undercover spy away. He can't drain there at the audience chamber anyway, so move away from the guy with the weapon so you don't have to worry about getting hit with a sniper. And you can... It's one possible way to keep your a gift alive. He also happened to draw someone who loves you, which is the other way of freeing Han, which is also kind of important. Um, this card is the one that kind of floats in and out of a variety of profit builds. Um, if you, with court being as popular as it is, and then being able to sort of just pile up guys in the audience chamber, I feel like this may be a card that should be included in, uh, in decks right now. Uh, if court is less popular and it was more imperial based decks and things, this isn't as, uh, necessary, but, um, this is the just lost part. Not really such a big deal, but it certainly helps. But if Leia is present on a site where Han is a captive, release Han. That's it. No destiny draw, no nothing. Just Leia at a site, Han's a captive, release him. So drop Leia, release Han, move away. Seems pretty straightforward. Gavin or Jealous and Fire can deal on chamber with their tanks is no fun. Well, that's another thing, too. Uh, by separating the sites like this, as Jared pointed out, if they park a, a tank or some type of vehicle that has the ability or to fire a, a cannon at an adjacent site, uh, at least you can camp out uh, in the audience chamber and kind of just concede this site and keep your guys safe from getting trampled by the tank, getting overwhelmed, or, you know, getting your face blown off. So the question will be is, is he ready? And the answer is no, he is not ready. He's debating whether he wants to play that. It could be worse. Yeah, he's just going to top deck one. Um, yeah, usually you deploy a bunch of guys uh, in mass, whether it's deploying outside, piling up a bunch of guys, and then using like Neighborn to move everybody in. A little bit more risky. Um, or they would walk in. And then, you know, have something like it's a trap to then cancel the battle. When your opponent deploys a bunch of crap and battles you, um, you cancel the battle to get out of it, and then you reinforce your guys, and then it becomes just a whole big bloodbath. So usually what happens in this matchup is there's one or two very brutal battles early on in the audience chamber, and whoever comes out with less blood on their face... Um, well, maybe more of their opponent's blood on their face. There you go. Whoever bled less, the least, uh, usually the game kind of spirals from there. Kind of a lot like a throne room hunt down game. Whoever digs into that battleground first and gets the first big battle to go their way, uh, it's usually pretty tough to for the other side to come back. Cornall, thank you for renewing your subscription as well. All right, so he's going to get the Twi'lek for the passenger deck. He's going to play Stinger from hand, and he's going to back it up with basically any ship. What's he got? Ellison Hinthra? There you go. That doesn't really even need a pilot at this point, but you could pull Woof if you wanted to. You don't really need to, though. Um, Prophet not known for playing much space, if any. Occasionally you'll see them play, like, one ship just to sort of keep their opponent honest from doing something quite like this. Uh, whether it's uh, something usually that's, you know, maybe it's like a starfighter with a landing claw so they can attach and kind of use that to satisfy a battle plan. Attach, detach, force drain, that whole thing. Um, in that case, it'll be a Bravo fighter, a Rick in Queen's ship, 
or a uh, booster and pulsar skate are usually the ones that you see for that. Um, in slightly different builds, if you were playing like General Leia, and then you had General Kenobi, maybe a couple of leaderships, you might see a home one Akbar. A little less likely, <clears throat> but certainly a concern. All right. So he's got this so he can get around battle plan. Still can't drain in the audience chamber because that's what's on the profit objective. They get to start aliens. They don't get to drain there. <clears throat> and now we're going to see light side deploy a whole bunch of guys. See what weapons and stuff they want to get. So we're going to get a mace windu. There's a Leia rebel princess. He'll get a used pile pull off this. And there are quite a few good cards in here to get. Hujix, can't go wrong with ever taking a Hujix in hand. Uh, Ray, you could then deploy Ray and get another use pile pull and then take the Hujix or something else. Uh, draw their fires, fairly good. Your opponent has quite a bit of force saved and wipe them out. Makes draw their fire a little less enticing. Skywalkers to cancel barrier. Quite a mercenary, which uh, cancels Ellis, which scum decks sometimes play. Uh, it's been a little less prevalent because of quite a mercenary non-V showing up in a few tournament decks recently. Uh, let you get Chewy or Merc Armor. During your move phase, break an undercover spy. <clears throat> so certainly a couple options here. Depending on what else he wanted to deploy, he's got Chewy, who's going to get a used pile pole. Uh, I might be inclined to take a Ray here. Um, and then you can deploy your Ray and pick a different, pick another card, and then get her benefit, and then probably drop Chewie as well, and get something else. He opted for the quite a mercenary. Nothing wrong with that. Decided it was going to be the someone who loves you run away route. So there you go. So he drops Chewie because Chewie deploys cheaper to where Leia is. Deploys minus three to same site as Leia. And it's two to power and if anything cancels game text of characters, uh, etc. Uh, so he's going to go this route. He's going to play the someone who loves you. He's going to free Han. He'll then get to retrieve cards, Secret Plans is out, which doesn't stop that retrieval, and he's got two Battlegrounds here, so Coward wouldn't stop it either. He'll get to retrieve these couple of cards, and then he can move everybody away. Uh, no weapon for Mace makes him less appealing, but Leia does get a gun. Maybe even just a token Jedi lightsaber or something for the variety of other characters. Alright, so there's someone who loves you. There's Han getting freed. Objective flips. Uh, uh, the profit objective. When you flip it. Just to recap. Uh, immediately retrieve 5 force. Or 10 if Han has power less than 4. Uh, there's only a couple of the early Hans have power less than 4. For the most part, the other ones are all power 4. So they are limited to just 5 retrieval. Uh, and then while this side up during your control phase, opponent loses 1 force for each battleground occupied and it's just location, so it also does work in space. Uh, I have seen people use the Lando in Falcon ship with um, Landing Claw as well, because then you attach it, and then you detach it, and then he counts, because he's Lando, and he's occupying a battleground, so you get one extra ping. Um, not always the best way to go, but certainly, you know, there's other uses for Lando, whether it's Vibroax or Scoundrel, but, uh, you know, if you have enough other sources of damage, having Lando and ship not not the worst option you could come up with. And then you flip the card back if Han is captured or not on table. So if Han gets captured again or killed, it flips back to the zero side, and while the zero side's up, you can't force drain uh, at Tatooine locations. So it kind of really just shuts your whole deck down. He's going to get to retrieve the five cards. Well, he only had three, but he'll get to retrieve those. And then he'll pay three and move these guys away. And he's going to pull aim high. 
slow down his opponent's retrieval. Yeah, that's the problem with Ponababa too, is Chewy Protector. Because Chewy Protector can cancel uh, cancel the game text for a remainder of turn of a character at same site who's power less than 4. So you drop Chewy on Master Luke. Chewy cancels Ponda's text, which then lets Luke target people. And then that could leave Ponda just kind of sitting there by himself, staring at Luke and Chewy. Not the most common version of Chewy played, but in a Profit deck... I kind of like this because of the use pile pulls, and uh, that type of pull chain can facilitate you getting Chewy into play, um, and then he deploys cheaper to Leia, so, you know, the use pile pull character, use pile pull character, um, it kind of really lets you get multiple characters out at the same time, and then they can really do some damage. Plus his game text canceling ability comes in handy on more than a few characters. Uh, now that the objective is flipped, Darkseid can drain here in the audience chamber. So they get a drain of one, and they get a drain of one here as well. And he top decks an Odin combo, and he throws away a rescue in the clouds from his used pile. Curious, he didn't use... Oh, he drained there first. Never mind. I was going to say, curious he didn't use Leia to cancel the drain, but he drained on the ground first when he had no loss pile. So, oh, we're getting a revert. He deployed Proxima with the Twi'lek. I'm guessing he maybe wanted to pick a different alien. Still get a Twi'lek. Nope, he's still going to Proxima. So I'm not sure exactly what that revert was about. And there's a Dr. Evazon non-combo. For anybody who's not as familiar with this guy, this is the one that's brutal to mains decks. Especially now that, like my father, is seeing less play. Not so good doctor may operate on any other character present that was just hit or just disarmed. Patient is lost. So if you say Ellis some people over in front in the control phase or in the activate phase and then play disarmed because you've got a guy with a weapon and they've got a guy with a weapon and then the doctor immediately operates and makes that guy lost. So you could Ellis a bunch of guys over. Oh, look, Leia's a problem. I don't have any ability. I just disarm Leia, and then I operate on her. Now it's just these guys left by themselves who I can now battle with, because now I've got my ability back. So there's some things there that can go on with this particular doctor and disarmed. Uh, he also has the Utah Guta here, uh, which does the same thing as the Quite a Mercenary. Cancel during move phase, break cover and under, an undercover spy. So that will break the Gifts cover. But that part is not... Actually, I don't think any of this card is immune to sense. Uh, the first part is the part that cancels Nabern. All right, so that the second part of this is not immune to sense, and that's what he was saving his sense for, which then just got grabbed. And he will now try to sense the Uta Guta. And he successfully does with a Nabern leads. Very uh, ironic that those are the cards that were kind of drawn for that. So that will keep 3PO undercover and the a gift intact for a bit longer. That's the other advantage, not putting any pilots up here. If you had put Woof or somebody else up here, which he didn't need, saved him a character and a card to begin with. But it also keeps an alien. There's no aliens here, so this drain is not minus one. Um, and you've got decent power here, seven power, a battle destiny, good forfeit on the ships. They're both immune to less than five. Uh, Oswald's only immune when Gurry's piloting, but uh, Alice is immune to less than five. So, you know, you can deal with that situation 
if by chance he had a ship kind of later. Uh, but for the meantime, keep yourself a, an option and a way to do uh, some damage. Some good options here. He takes the ray this time around. He's going to use Saitor. He's going to get the lightsaber out of the reserve deck. He had the lightsaber in hand, I believe, earlier, and I think he just 3PO'd it back. Um, always a good thing to do the, during your opponent's turn if you know that you're about to play Luke, because then you can put it on the bottom and get an extra card out of the out of the deal with 3PO. All right, so there's the four for Ray. Get another use pile search. Uh, Prophet has a lot of use pile searches between the the farm. I must be allowed to speak. You're getting four, Luke, Leia, Lando, and Chewie, and then they usually play a Ray. So there's a fifth one, and plus you usually have 3PO, so then you're putting cards back. There's a lot of manipulation, a lot of way to move cards around in a Profit deck. Uh, certainly one of the things that makes it a fan favorite. Uh, and then Jared's just going to kind of pass the turn there. So he's got a drain of one. This is now a drain of two. And now he's doing two ping damage because there's no Imperial Decree or anything out. And he's kind of going to kind of dictate to his opponent, you're going to have to do something to me to make this uh, this happen. Uh, Robert, thank you for following us. Welcome to the channel. There's a Forlom. There's a Cad Bane. Okay, so we got a few things going on here. We've got Django Fett, who adds a Battle Destiny when he's with a Jedi... EPP or maintenance card, so he's adding a destiny because he's with Jedi Luke. You've got Forlom who cancels a character's game text, and you've got Cad Bane who cancels the immunity to attrition of a Jedi when he's with another bounty hunter. Also makes other bounty hunters power plus one. So both of these guys got a power bump. Uh, Forlom can uh, Cad Bane and Django together can cancel, or Cad Bane and either of these two together can cancel Luke's immunity to attrition. Could also be relevant if there's a hidden weapons coming soon. Um, or Forlom could just cancel Luke's game text altogether. This is the new Luke, who was uh, eroded and combined with the young Skywalker. Uh, so his weapon destiny draws are plus one. And that same site opponent must first use a force to fire a weapon. This includes Forlom. Even though there's no destiny draw, he is still targeting. He is still firing the weapon. It's just the response is automatic, or the result is automatic. Uh, so this can still be blaster deflected, uh, and it will still cost a force to use the weapon. He only left one card in reserve deck, though, um, so he's getting two destiny here with Django, so either he's not expecting somebody to live, or he just miscounted. Or perhaps he just needed more force to deploy all the guys in his hand. Nope, he's not battling. He moves Darrow over. It looks like he moves Proxima over. It looks like he's walking some people over. This is a slightly risky move. I'm sure he thinks... We'll see what he does when he's done. All right, he did bring Gurry. I'm like, I was going to say, he's moving people over bit by bit. If he thinks he's going to be safe by hiding behind, well, Leia's there, so he can't battle any of them. That's usually when your opponent plays neighbor and moves Leia away and then beats the crap out of everybody else who's left. Um, so I don't recommend that play. Especially in a deck like this, you've already seen neighbor go by. He drew it for Destiny earlier, and he's got 3PO, so he easily could be tracking that, and then he just uses 3PO, takes it right into hand. So keep an eye on that. But he doesn't. He brings over Gurry. So he's got uh, multiple aliens with Proxima to add a battle destiny. He's got a weapon here in the form of uh, Mara Jade there. Mr. Fahrenheit, thank you for renewing your subscription. Woo! 12 months. Congratulations. Be sure and send me a message so you can get your uh, final foil, the I want that map foil, and your orange uh, token, your poker chip. And 
let's resume our game. So he moves Dr. E as well. So he's leaving Jabba and Pondababa together. Jared's going to play Escape Pod from hand. Go fish out the Hoojiks. Yeah, this could be, I'm sure, you know, there's always a reacting Greedo floating around somewhere. Um, and then there's, you know, other uh, tricks between barrier, projective telepathy, stunning leader, etc. that court has available to it to cancel a battle in the audience chamber. Because otherwise, right now, this uh, this Lando with Vibroax looks pretty darn tempting. Hey, look, it's a neighbor. It looks pretty darn tempting, too. Um, you know, your opponent's got 13 cards in hand. They usually run two Gicks in a court deck because they like to initiate battles to retrieve stuff. Sometimes they initiate battles they know that they're going to lose just so they can retrieve two previously lost characters. So as tempting as it might seem to just, like, let's just neighbor everybody to the audience chamber and beat the crap out of these two. It's like, well, that's good. You'll probably end up canceling scum. Um, but there's a decent chance that uh, it's not quite going to work out the way you want it to. And there's the disarmed. And there goes the Leia. It's almost like I foreshadowed that. So she's disarmed. The blaster rifle goes immediately lost because you can't carry weapons. They lose weapons. And then Dr. E operates and removes Leia from the location. And now he's going to neighbor and he's going to move these three characters for the cost of five. Uh, they are moving over to this location, so it'll be a big pile of guys here at Jabba's Palace. Uh, any responses to Neighborin or Ellis get played after the destiny is drawn. The person has paid for it and accepted the tra uh, the whether or not they want to complete the transport or not. So this is why he then gets he plays the kick combo, which cancels the neighbor leads. That is also a risky play. Um, the sense is grabbed, so it's less risky in this situation, but the used part that cancels neighbor leads is not immune to sense. So that part can be sensed, and it's really awkward and embarrassing when you, your opponent plays neighbor and to move a bunch of guys to beat the crap out of you, and you play the gick to cancel the move, and then they sense it, and it goes to your loss pile, and then they beat the crap out of you, and you wish you had your gick. Um, so just kind of be mindful of the situations there are times where what just happened is okay, and there are times where you're almost willing to just let them move over, let this battle happen, and just be like, that's okay, I'll just kick the battle damage and not have to worry about it. So be very careful of which situation you're in there, and uh, if there's any fear of or any possibility that you think a sense could be played and be successful... Don't use the gick to cancel the neighbor. Oh, there's another disarmed. He had double disarmed. So you got Forlom over there in front of Luke, and now Luke's lightsaber is lost. <clears throat> That's a pretty good turn. Not going to lie, it's a pretty good turn for uh, for the dark side there. Light side still has one ace up this up their sleeve with a Lando with Vibroax here. And he will get a use pile pull. Uh, EPP Obi's looking pretty good. Or Ahsoka. He's going to opt to take the general Leia. That'll also work because she'll retrieve a force when they initiate battle, which will get Luke's lightsaber back.
doesn't deploy her though, and decides to just go for the battle anyway. Here comes the reacting Greedo. Needs the save force to move these three guys away. Lando's going to try to exclude someone. Let's just double check here how Lando works. We don't see this one too often. Target character for free. Both players draw destiny. Target excluded from battle if your destiny plus four is greater than their power and destiny. So in this case, he picked on Forlom, who's power two. So it's two and a destiny versus four and a destiny. And since we verified his deck earlier, we know that this is a big pile of fours and fives. So there's a high chance of success here. That's going to exclude Forlom from the battle. Which means Forlom will not then be able to cancel someone's game text, like Lando, who adds a battle destiny. Darkseid still gets to use Django's text, though, because he's an EPP and he's with the Jedi. So he'll get the extra battle destiny too. But with Forlom excluded from the battle, and light side likely to draw greater than six, two of these characters should be going away. Yes, their Battle Destiny draws are still lower from a gift. Ooh, there's a 10. So that's good. definitely going to clear two Bounty Hunters. I mean, these guys are all forfeit plus, you know, Django's an 8, Cad Bane's 7, Credo's a 6. Uh, so two of them are still going to go away. Oh, and Ray adds one to the total. So you've got 11. So two of them are still going away. Dark Side draws a 4, which gets subtracted by a gift. So it's just a 2. And their second draw, or tug, or tug. I don't know who told Mike to put that card in his deck, but he shouldn't have listened to him. <laughs> now, uh, or tug is in the deck because I believe he's another EPP, so he's just another way to trigger disarms. Plus, it's just cool. I mean, when have you ever not used or tug? Or tug was actually my character in World of Warcraft. Let me actually look at him. Bam. Actually look like that, too. That's why I named him that. So Jabba's Palace Site, Gamorreans, Deploy Minus, Forfeit Plus. So he gets the same bump for, like, my kind of scum decks. But he's got the Axe, which targets the character creature for free. They're hit. Forfeit Zero, Destiny Plus One, greater than defense value. So it's just pretty much straight up standard EPP text. Weapon Plus One, greater than defense value. They are hit and Forfeit Zero. Uh, decent Deploy Forfeit. Four power, st about standard for dark side scum decks. Uh, with Jabba, gets doubled up to an eight, but he's really in there to facilitate uh, EPP disarmed that kind of aspect. So, he makes Ganna Gleamort better. Uh, potentially, I guess, yes. He would boost Ganna's uh, power and forfeit, depending on where Orteg is. All right, so that battle went. Pretty well for uh, for light side, and now they will go ahead and move some characters around here. Move Han, move Mace, move Chewie. All outside Java's palace, kind of like in the movies, right? They rescued Han, and then they're trying to get the hell out. Not exactly. It didn't quite work out that way. They ended up in the Rancor pit and in the dungeon. And then got put in the sail barge and taken out to the Great Pit of Carcoon. So it's kind of fitting if we end up all the way out there. But uh, Darkseid's got some decent drains here that they're not paying for. It's still one and one. So they'll continue just to take their two damage a turn and just you know, keep the pressure on their opponent a little bit. It's free damage, so, you know, absolutely take it while you can. 
Um, and now we'll see just exactly what Darkseid wants to do between uh, having a Jabba's Haven to retrieve a character if necessary, um, and then plenty of force to work with here. Hey! Revealed with uh, Proxima. Did that not work? During your control phase, may reveal the top three cards of your reserve deck. Take one alien into hand if possible and shuffle your reserve deck. So he revealed the top two cards, but because it was less than three, it automatically failed and didn't let him take a Fontmon. Okay, interesting. I believe that's working as intended. Um, because if you don't meet the requirements, in this case, three cards, then the result part fails. Like you can initiate the action, but the result step should still fail and, and work in the favor of your opponent, which in this case would be not taking the card into hand. All right, so we get a Dengar. And Chewie's going to cancel Dengar's text. Because Dengar's only power three. Only power three. There's an uh, Utaguta... Again, so he is successful, and he has made a gift lost. Is he playing two Utagutas, or did he somehow get that back? Maybe he retrieved it with uh, one of those battles. to shuffle his people over. There goes Mara. There goes Darrow. Probably move Guri over and then move Proxima back to the audience chamber would be my guess. Yeah, Guri's out there to limit Battle Destiny draws, so Light Side can only draw one here. He's going to leave Proxima by herself. So he must have some solid defensive cards, and worst case scenario, I guess he could use his once per game and retrieve Greedo into hand uh, or deploy another Greedo just to soak up some power and forfeit. Uh, he certainly knows that Light Side has more than its fair share of good characters committed to this one location so the chances of them having uh, more... Char I mean Obi's still around, uh, Anakin and Padme are still around we haven't seen them yet. So there's a few guys but uh, you know, Mike certainly does have uh, a few force active and 13 cards in hand. We've seen a stunning leader drawn before, too, so uh, for Destiny and whatnot. So that could certainly uh, work out here. Jared wisely uses Chewie to cancel Dr. E's game text. So God forbid he gets disarmed again. Uh, Dr. E can't operate on somebody. He is then going to play a Jedi Lev and spend four force. And he's going to retrieve Leia Rebel Princess into hand. And we'll see if he wants to deploy said Leia Rebel Princess to the audience chamber and then cancel Scum. And he does. That's the one benefit of, like we mentioned at the start of the game, the big benefit of the light side audience chamber is that it's automatic. You don't have to pay four force. So deploying Leia and then paying four to cancel scum kind of takes up your whole turn, especially this late in the game. And now we can feel free to sort of consolidate everybody back in the middle because you can use Leia to cancel the drains at the two sites. Uh, or he can split people up, and he can go out wide either way. He's got the Hujiks, he's got the It's a Trap, so he certainly has uh, options to get out of battles. And now if he's just trying to maximize his objective damage... We'll see Mace probably go with Han. 
and Chewie probably move over there as well. We can Lando together at one site, Han and the boys together at the other, and Leia is going to hang out in the audience chamber behind her text, plus the possibility of uh, It's a Trap. The firepower shield retrieves the scum, but it doesn't get recirculated immediately, so it'll still be gone for a turn, because it's an end of turn action, so after you recirculate, then you do the firepower retrieval. So these cards are going to stay here, so we can't just retrieve it, recirculate, recirculate it, and then have Jabba pull it right back out again. <laughs> but he doesn't need to, because he just found his other scum. <laughs> um, if he wants to battle this turn, he won't be pulling it with Jabba. It wouldn't matter anyway, it'll just get cancelled. Um, but there we have Jasper. This is the anti-Leia alien card. Total ability may not be reduced here, your four strains. Here may not be cancelled by Reflections 3 Leia. So he's kind of the big counter to her. He stops them from blank her from blanking the ability. He also stops her from canceling the force drain at this location. And you'll notice in this case he only drained at Nalhutta. He did not drain over here, in which case Leia could have canceled it and retrieved a card. It also doesn't shuffle if there are two cards. So it doesn't shuffle the reserve deck. It just puts them right back in the order that they were in. Thank you for that update, Adam. Because uh, I guess it just it fails the action, so it stops doing things. So it's like, reveal the top three cards. And then it's like, oh, that failed. So then it just stops and doesn't do anything else. It probably st should still go ahead and shuffle, because shuffling should happen anytime cards are revealed. Unless it says peak. But uh, maybe... Uh, you're on the jump development team. You guys can work out the, the mechanics and the kinks of that one. Um, but I guess maybe because of the way it's written, it's being treated as a result, the shuffle. But I feel like that may be... Maybe just the card may need to be rewarded or the rules need to be clarified, but I feel like it should shuffle regardless of whether the result was successful or not. He is going to deploy the scum. He could still battle Leia, just for pure power purposes. Doesn't quite have the ring to it without the battle destiny. And he is just going to move a couple characters over instead. Uh, Mike's downside is, is he's got quite a number of cards in hand and quite a number of cards on the table, so he doesn't have much left to work with. He's only got 10 cards face down at this point. He did find Decree, though, so he is going to be able to basically m mitigate the objective damage all the way down to 1. He is just kind of splitting people up here. And we're going to have to assume he's got the second Gick in his hand. Otherwise, uh, these are some very risky plays. This is a little less risky now. But still, uh, Lando could exclude Mara if he happens to draw you know, track 5 or 6. Uh, there's a possibility that Lando could exclude Mara. And then they would just be like these little guys left by themselves. Yeah, but there's a third disarmed. So it doesn't really matter. Three disarms? What? Who does that? That's a crazy. That Dr. E guy, man. Whew. He is pretty annoying. Oh, there's an Obi in the reserve deck. Perhaps now would be a good time to 3PO for one of them. Lots of dismemberment going on here.
Oh yeah, Jasper, that's true. Jasper did get buried, so he would be excluded. So he could have battled, retrieved, and then the battle would have been immediately cancelled once Jasper had been excluded. Oh, there's the Chewy. Now, <laughs> it constantly calculates Jasper's power. In this particular case, because it's the light side audience chamber, there's only one force icon there for dark side, so he's only power three. So Chewy moves over, Chewy cancels his text, which means he stopped canceling Leia's text, which then means Leia makes all these guys go away. And then Scum gets canceled yet again. Chewy Protector. Pretty good counter to uh, to Scum decks. There's lots of guys that are power. There's a, decent, there's a handful of guys that are power less than four that, uh, that Chewy can take advantage of. All right, well, just like in the movies, Luke has made it all the way out to the Great Pit of Carcoon. And Corrin Horn has found his way to the passenger deck. That's not like the movies at all. Uh, but he did find himself an off-planet location, so he can get himself some force drain action going. And now he'll move everybody over and draw a couple of cards. And then... He'll throw you something back. And then at the start of his turn, well, and then, yeah, he could use Leia in this situation to cancel these drain. Well, he can't drain here because there's nobody there. Uh, but this one and this, well, this was a drain of, they're both drains of one because they're both sites are minus one. A firepower is available, and he will use that to retrieve another card again. Chewie will now cancel Jasper's text, which means Leia will get to blank their ability for the turn. Jaren will top deck. There's plenty of cards in his hand. I'm not sure what exactly he's saving that it could be worse for, but maybe uh, P-59 hitting somebody and losing two might be a good way to spend that. All right, so there's P-59. Here comes Scum yet again. There's Twi'lek. No passenger deck or pit. Afantman is there, so he knows he's going to draw one, so uh, not shooting anybody with that or really doing any battle damage with that. Mara will continue her chase of Luke. She moves for free, by the way. That's in her game text. Oh, we'll just do this. It's kind of lagging a little bit. All right. Uh, while Luke or Emperor on table, power plus one, and she moves for free. We were aware of the weirdness with two cards in reserve when we were proofing it, but there wasn't enough room to make it work to work the intuitive way. All right. All right, so we get the drain of two. You get the one ping from the objective. There's the Antilles maneuver, for those of you unfamiliar with what this card does. Most of the time we see it being used for starship weapon destinies or to deploy guys, but uh, for opponent to fire a weapon, they have to first use a force. So that does limit them a little bit 
in terms of what they possibly can or can't do. Uh, for in this case, for Mara to swing, he'd have to pay a force for Mara to swing. Uh, if he battles here for P-59 to shoot, he'd have to spend a force. Um, when you combo that up with Luke, who also says, opponent must first use a force to fire a weapon, now it costs two force, his only two force, and then he blaster deflections it. If you have something like draw their fire, that's a great way to kind of suck out uh, on your opponent. You make them spend their force, then cancel it with the blaster deflection, or they hit you, and then it gives you the ability to battle elsewhere because the uh, Antilles maneuver is for remainder of turn. So now that he has done it here and used all his force, uh, P-59 can't shoot. Dengar can't, couldn't shoot. Forlom couldn't shoot because he doesn't have the force available. So they both draw low. Light side loses the battle, but Luke is immune, so he'll just lose a card, and then Mara dies and goes away. He could forfeit Luke if he wanted to, but he doesn't need to. All right. Chewie's going to cancel Ponda's game text, so Ponda doesn't add a destiny to attrition, which I guess means we're going to get a battle here in the audience chamber. Both sides will draw a destiny. There's a big old five for light side. Dark side had no force available to spend either, so they couldn't double anyone with Joppa's power. Well, they both draw fives. <coughs> it's probably going to be Jasper. Light side loses mace. He's actually the one, he's got the, you know, best power and forfeit available, but he's probably the one whose game text is doing the least. Oh, dark side loses Jabba. Okay. Because they don't want Leia to cancel the drains at the adjacent sites. Uh, actually, that wouldn't matter. She only stops at canceling the drains here. Yeah, I would have thought Jasper might have gone there. He's not doing anything. He's Came to, I guess he's keeping Chewie honest. Not that that matters much. Oh, I guess in case he moves away, which in this case he is. He is moving away. So now he can't use Leia to cancel the force drain here. I don't know that I would have moved. <coughs> I mean, I guess it's the safer play. You're ahead on life force totals. You move over. You cancel Dengar's game tech, so he can't shoot anybody. Uh, he can't battle because of Leia anyway, so then he has to kind of spend his turn chasing you around. He can drain here and here. And then just won't drain over here. <coughs> he does get drained for two. He top decks the Obi. And he top decks the Wisa. That might have been a good time to play the It Could Be Worse, but he opts not to. Really not sure exactly what he's holding, what he's clutching that for. I mean, he's just trying to keep the force available for It's a Trap since it costs an extra one because of first strike. So he didn't want to play the It Could Be Worse because he needed the force in case he was going to have to spend four on It's a Trap. That actually makes more sense. All right. So the Prince gets barriered, so no battle for him. And then I guess Dark Side will just continue their... Chase and shuffle, but uh, Mike's down to 13 cards total. Light side is at 24, so they've got a pretty big card advantage here. 
Dark Side's doing a couple points of damage a turn, so is Light Side, so I feel like Light Side is certainly uh, ahead in this game a decent amount. And we'll see exactly what they want to do here. Uh, he could pay to drain with Luke. He could do one ping. Uh, my hunch would be Anakin and Anakin's lightsaber go after the prince. And he just tries to make him, uh, you know, go for broke there. Lock down that location. He forfeits Corrin if he draws high enough. Keeps the Anakin there, who then can drain for three on future turns. Yeah. This is going to be rough. The only weapon he's got left, because everybody else has been disarmed. Um. <laughs> he is going to play the stunning leader. Weapons display is going to kick in and make him lose two. but it does save him for a turn here from getting a butt whooping. Mike's down to two cards in hand, so he certainly uh, is going to need some options. So he loses two force. And there goes a Greedo. He's down to seven cards left face down. That's not going to be enough, really, to back up the Prince if anybody thinks, you know, if any of those guys are two cards in his hand, uh, and still be able to move and chase people around. Because there they go again. They're just going to move outside. And Leia, I don't believe, has used her game text yet to cancel any drains. Because Mike didn't want to give his opponent back any cards. But at some point in time, uh, you have to do the math. And you have to think, like, how long is this Leia going to be on the table? And if it's more than one to two turns, just drain. Just drain anyway. Give your opponent the cards for that turn, and then on future turns, you'll end up offsetting that damage and then increasing damage. Because every turn he just says, oh, I don't want to drain because Leia's just going to cancel it and get cards back. He's not doing the forced loss, and he just, he's falling behind in the game. So he drains for two. And Jared loses two cards here with no reserve deck and only two cards in hand. That certainly seems like a good time to play. It, it could be worse. Are you, did, do you have any inclination your opponent is playing Omnibox? It's worse. You've seen 90% or 80% of his deck at this point, right? He's got seven, eight, nine cards. So you've seen 85% of his deck. Plus, you know what some of these are because he's drawn them for Destiny and stuff. So he probably could have saved a couple of force here. Um, if it were differential, like a match play situation, that might have made a big difference. Uh, in a game you're just trying to win, like an OCS, not a big deal. Dark side will consolidate their guys. Again, but they've got nothing to do with the old prince over there, so he's going to get hurt. Michael activate with wipe. Should we can't stock to his game text just in case he's got. Well, I can't disarm anybody. He's not going to battle there anyway. If he was going to battle, he would have canceled uh, Dengar's text. You'll notice there when he force drained with Luke, Leia lit up. You can use Leia to cancel your own force drain. She doesn't say opponent force drained. She says to cancel a force drain at a related site. So you could pay three with Luke to cancel your own force drain by putting a card back on top of your reserve deck. Uh, that can come into play in a variety of fashions, especially with 3PL on the table. If there's a key card right here, you put it on top, 
Drop a card and take it into hand. Put a high destiny on top. Battle, draw it for battle destiny. Late in a match play game, you just want to get one more differential back. Cancel your own force drain. If it'll make a difference. If like you're still going to drain over somewhere else and win, do this first and then cancel your drain to get your differential up one more. Uh, Jared was reading in chat. Jared was extremely gun shy because in a previous game, the only game he lost, he played it could be worse, and his opponent did have the it's worse. Uh, I guess his opponent was playing a hunt down deck, and uh, hit him for 14, which is the only game that he'd lost. I can understand being a little a little gun shy after having something like that, and uh, Mike's gonna go ahead and scoop it here, and rightfully so. He's uh, we're talking 6, 13, 17 to 7. So he's 10 cards behind as it is. Um, Anakin's going to clear this site because he just hit the Prince, which he did. If he, Even if this is the Gick, he's still going to drain for 3 every turn, and the game will be over in 2 turns. Uh, between 3, ping for 1, 3, ping for 1. That's it. Game over. Um, and he's not doing enough damage back to, to end this. So congrats to Jared on a... Uh, well-played game and an excellent uh, February OCS month. Um, thanks for sharing the game link. Congrats to Troop on successfully disarming three characters in one game and operating on two of them with uh, Dr. E. That's always interesting. So, eh. We'll go ahead and do that. Take a quick peek over in the old Jemp lobby. Reload, see what's going on. Uh, we've got some Gem PC games going on. That's the last thing that I wanted to talk about, was the Gem PC. we got Larry Kraft and Taco playing, and Edward Cheen and Jagtech playing. Uh, please hold. Uh, challenge fourth Gem PC. That's the other thing that's going on right now, is what Batmouse uh, has been doing for the last four years. The online match play championship, free to enter. Uh, there is a prediction contest that is now closed because games have started to be played. Uh, hopefully, people, you know, 20 people got to fill out brackets. Uh, but we've certainly uh, 64 players since it's online. It's free to play. Uh, certainly no hesitation for anybody to sign up to play in that. Uh, a couple people have already advanced. Uh, Coffee Pass over Ming. 40-25. That's a little bit of an upset there. Uh, Tom Damon beat Ardra. That's the top half of the bracket. Any other games played in the bottom half? Oh, yeah, I won. Um, and then it uh, doesn't look like we got much else going on so far. Um, so this is going on. This will be going on probably well into March, leading up to the actual MPC in April. And uh, we'll see just exactly uh, how these things progress. It takes about two weeks per round. Uh, in a 64 bracket, there are six rounds between now and finish, so um, things will move along a little quicker as people, you know, start to whittle themselves down. You can see who your next round opponent is, and people can start to play ahead a little bit. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call it a show tonight. Uh, thank you guys all very much for tuning in and watching. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Uh, look to do more shows on a regular basis now moving forward now that we're back from our little hiatus uh, maybe we'll stream some of these gem PC games if they're live in the future or uh, you know get some game links from them see some interesting matchups so if you have any interesting uh, decks matchups feel free to PM slack PC forums uh, send me your game links and maybe you'll be reviewed on the show uh, but that'll wrap it up for tonight Thank you guys again very much for watching. See you back here Monday. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel.